All right. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Natalie Wolf, and I'm actually an undergraduate here at the U of M. I'm a senior. So about six years ago, um, I first noticed a small lump on my right side. Um, I went to a doctor to have it checked out and was told that it was a cyst, most likely, and that it was really nothing to worry about. So I just left it alone. Um, I finished up my senior year in high school and was enjoying my summer before starting here at the U. Um, as the summer progressed, the lump on my size grew to about the size of a golf ball. And um, with the summer months and wearing swimsuits and whatnot, I decided that I wanted it removed. Um, so I went to a dermatologist who, um, again, told me that he thought it was a cyst and that it would, was something that was not to worry about and that it would be easy to remove. Um, I went in later that week to have the procedure done. Um, after the doctor removed the lump, he had told me that it was actually much deeper than initially thought. Um, but that, again, it was nothing to worry about. Um, he told me that he was going to send the sample to pathology just as a procedural thing with anything they take off the skin and told me that test would be back in about a week. Um, the next week I spent getting ready for um, moving at the U um, and to attend Welcome Week. Um, August 30th, the day before I was to move into the U, um, I had been out shopping with my mom when I returned home and saw that there was a message on our answering machine. I listened to it and it was from the doctor telling me that I needed to call back as soon as possible. Um, I grabbed the phone and called him back not thinking anything bad would um, turn out of it. I can still remember his response to this day. Natalie, I don't know how to tell you this, but the sample we sent away came back as cancerous tissue. The rest of the conversation, I don't really remember, um, but I was basically told that they did not know the exact cancer type that I had and that I should proceed with moving into the U the next day to start college. Um, when I got off the phone, I let my mom speak to the doctor. When um, she was done, we both broke into tears and then proceeded to inform family and friends of the news. Um, we tried to carry on a normal night and finish packing the car for the move in the next day. Um, in the next week, I moved into the U, started Welcome Week, um, started classes, and celebrated my 19th birthday. Uh, later that week, I went to meet with my oncologist, Brenda Weigel, and I learned that I was diagnosed with extra osseous Ewing sarcoma. Um, I also learned that my treatment would need to start immediately and continuing with school would not be an option. I moved home that weekend, had my port placed Wednesday, and Thursday morning was meeting again with Dr. Weigel to discuss the details of starting my first round of chemotherapy that day. Um, I discussed with her fertility and how waiting to start chemo um, to undergo fertility treatments would not be an option as this would allow my um, cancer to progress rapidly and decrease my survival greatly. Um, over my treatment, um, I went through 14 rounds of chemotherapy and surgery. My treatment schedule consisted of three chemotherapy drugs given over a three-day inpatient hospital stay, followed two weeks later by two chemotherapy drugs given over a five-day inpatient hospital stay. After six rounds of chemo, I had a break for surgery to remove the remaining tumor bed and um, then finished up my last eight rounds of chemotherapy. Um, overall, I ended up spending 74 days in the hospital. Um, I ultimately didn't really have too many side effects. Um, I would get really tired from the chemo and not have much energy, energy to do much. Um, I became neutropenic after all of my five-day rounds and had to be admitted to the hospital until my blood counts came up. Um, I received many blood and platelet transfusions and ended up developing an allergy to the platelet transfusions. And I also lost my hair um, and ended up wearing a wig to try and return some of the normalcy to my life. In June of 2011, I had my last chemo treatment and PET CT scans, which showed no evidence of disease. I started back at the U as a freshman in September of that year, and I have been cancer-free for almost four years now. Um, I am monitored every six months up to five years, and then will continue 
to be monitored yearly to um, check for any effects that may be caused from the chemo. After starting back at the U, I started researching in David Largospata's laboratory, um, first working on B-cell lymphoma, and now I'm researching osteosarcoma. Um, I just actually finished taking my MCAT on Friday, which by the way, it's now a seven hour test, so um, just changed. And I plan to apply to MD-PhD programs this next cycle. Um, luckily, my cancer was caught early, giving me a much better chance of survival. Um, it is very important to be diagnosed early, and sarcomas are often misdiagnosed, leading to a much worse outcome. It comes down to the medical provider to make sure they catch these rare cancers early, and I hope you are all able to help in aiding in the advocacy of sarcoma diagnoses. Thank you for listening, and I will take any questions.